Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to be covering square roots using the addition and subtraction methods of arithmetic. Now, to do these kind of problems, there's a few things you have to understand when you're doing square roots. For the first thing that we want to understand is that the product of any two numbers, considering that the product is the product a times b, um, we can separate these products into separate square roots, where we have the square root of a times the square root of b. And in this case, our a term is always going to be a perfect square, where our b term is an imperfect square. And what a perfect square means is that we have a number, for instance, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. And we can continue down this list until any term is a perfect square term. Now, this list you have to generally try to memorize, right? And the best way to memorize this is to write it effectively over and over, get used to common numbers multiplying with each other, and creating perfect squares. Because when we multiply a number by itself, we create the perfect product, which is 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4. And so the square root of each of these terms goes back to the base term, right? So the square root of 4 here becomes 2, square root of 9 becomes 3, square root of 16 becomes 4, square root of 25 becomes 5, and so on. And so this is really important in doing what you have to do for making these uh, radical problems work for you. Without this information, it's pretty impossible to try to do the work. Let's take a look at some of the problems here. We have part A here. We have the square root of 121 plus the square root of 99. Now what we're looking for is two numbers that create the number that we see in here so that we can break them down and maybe when they have the same common radicand term we can add them up just like objects right so if I have uh, two radical threes and I'm adding another four radical threes think of these as objects right so two radical threes plus four radical threes are just six radical threes and it's usually easier if you're telling yourself in a plural fashion that this is not just radical three or 2 radical 3 plus 4 radical 3, but 2 radical 3's plus 4 radical 3's. And it's really important because then you'll understand that they're just objects and you're adding these objects together. And so when we're breaking these down, we're looking for any factors of the numbers, if they're perfect or not. And if you go further down this list, you'll eventually find that 121 is the product of 11 times 11. And so this here, the square root of 121 just becomes 11 because 11 squared is 121. So the square root of 121 is just 11 itself. Meanwhile, 99 is the product of a number times 11, which is 9 times 11. So we have here 9 times 11, which breaks this down into two separate factors, which is 11 plus radical 9, radical 11. The 9 is perfect, right? The square root of 9 is just 3. And so we have here 11 plus 3 radical 11s. Now here, before we mention how to add the objects up, and if they're the same type of object, we can sum them up. But in the case we have 11 plus 3 radical 11, they're not the same kind of objects. So this is our final answer. All right. Now let's move on to part B here. And in part B we have square root of 72 minus the square root of 32. What we're looking for are two factors that make these numbers with the largest perfect square. And if you look at 72 at first glance, it's kind of hard because you think of 72 and you say, well, I know 9 times 8 makes 72, but it's not the largest perfect square, right? So if we look at 72, we look at the factors. We start with 1 and 72. Then the very next factor is 2 by 36, where 36 is a perfect square. And we also have other factors, right? So we may have like... Um, 8, uh, 4 by, 4 by 16, uh, is that correct? Let's see, 2 comes out, we have 18, 4 by 18, right? We also have, which this is a perfect square, we also have 6 by 12, there's no perfect squares in this, and finally we have 8 by 9, which 9 is the perfect square. Out of this entire list, we have three perfect squares, excluding one, because one changes nothing. And the biggest one we have here is 36. So we're going to use these two products 
to break down 72 since the square root of 36 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. And here we're going to have the perfect square first by the imperfect square. In the same way, we're going to break down 32. And 32 is 1 and 32, 2 and 16, 4 and 8. And the biggest perfect square here is not 4, but 16. So we're going to also use square root of 16 and square root of 2. Square root of 36 becomes 6. Radical 2s minus 4 radical 2s. And now these are objects, which are the same type. And 6 take away 4 gives us just 2. And this becomes 2 square root of 2s. Right? Remember, these are like objects. So 6 radical 2s take away 4 radical 2s. You're left with just 2 radical 2s. Moving on to the third one here. We have part C. We have 5 radical 7s plus 2 radical 28s minus 4 radical 63s. And in this case, we have a different set of factors for each one. But the first thing we want to notice is that there are no factors to 7. This is a prime number, so there's no way to break down the square root of 7. 28, however, has factors, right? And we have 128, 214, and 4 and 7, which 4 is the perfect square. So we're going to use this one. So here we have 5 radical 7s plus 2 times radical 4 times radical 7 minus 4. And let's break down 63 also. To break down 63, we have 163. We have 3 and 21. We have 7 and 9, right? And this is the last set of factors for 63, in which 9 is the only perfect square. So we're going to use this set for the last one. So we have radical 9, radical 7. And now we're going to break down the square roots that are perfect, like the 9 and the 4 here. So everything else stays the same. We have 2 by 2 by radical 7, minus 4 by 3, and radical 7. And so here we have just 5 radical 7s. 2 by 2 is 4. And here we have 4 by 3 is negative 12 because of the minus symbol. This is with radical 7s. Now they're objects again. Let's start with one, one symbol at a time, the one order of operation. We'll start with the plus left to right, right? 5 plus 4, since they're the same object, gives us 9 radical 7s. And we're still subtracting 12 radical 7s from 9. So 9 take away 12 is negative 3. And that has the radical 7 as the object with it. And that becomes negative 3 radical 7s. All right? Let's move on to the final one here. Part D here tells us we have, and this is the biggest problem of them all, 6 radical 48s, negative square root of 72, and negative 3 times 300. Now, for this one, I'm going to wipe off some space here so that we can have space to see what the factor in is. So for this one here, what we're looking at is ways to break down each number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down 48, 72, and 300 all accordingly. So we have 48, we have 72, and we have 300. After we break them all down, we're going to find the largest perfect square in each set and then work from there. So usually the reason why I start with 1 and 48 is because we're using a Russian peasant method to increase them as we go down. So we're taking the 2 factor out of 48 and we're left with the 2 over here. And 48 becomes half of this, which is just 24. Now, 48 is also divisible by 3. And so 3 multiplied by 16 also gives us 48. And 4 is also a factor of 48. So we have 4 times 12. 5 doesn't go into 48, but 6 does. And we have 6 times 8. And this is the last set of factors. Now, out of all of this, which are the perfect squares? We have 4. And we have 16, besides 1, which doesn't really ever count. So we're going to take this third line, because 16 is the largest perfect square. Moving on to 72, which we already did earlier, right? I believe in part B we saw 72. And we had here 1 and 72. We had 2 and 36. We had 3 and... Three and uh, 24. We also had 4 and 
four and eighteen and finally six times twelve and eight by nine right and here nine is perfect four is perfect and so is thirty six and in this case we're gonna take the thirty six because the thirty six is the largest perfect square pretty much the next set we have is three hundred and we have one and three hundred for this we have three and one hundred uh, we have wait two and one fifty first let's go in order right two and one fifty then we have three and one hundred and then we have four and seventy five we also have five and sixty we also have six and fifty seven doesn't make it eight doesn't make it nine doesn't make it but 10 does so that's going to be 10 by 30 uh 12 also makes it right it's going to be 12 by 25 13 doesn't make it 14 either 15 does that's 15 by 20 and I believe that's the last set of factors for 300. The largest perfect square out of all of these numbers, besides 25 here, besides 4, it's actually going to be 100, because 10 by 10 makes 100, right? And so in this case, what we're looking at is the largest of these perfect squares, which is 100. And so using 100 is going to help us cut all the work out of this problem and make it the easiest for us. Even though it may not look so simple right now, using any of these other ones was a result in using more steps to solve your problem because even though 4 is perfect, 18 has a perfect square in it and 9 by 2. So you would have to continue to break that down. Using just 36, we get to the very first one step to do this. So breaking these down into the perfect squares, the largest perfect squares that we found, we can take this square root of 48 and change it to 6 times the square root of 16 by square root of 3 and then we have negative the square root of 72 becomes square root of 36 by the square root of 2 and finally the square root of 3 uh, negative 3 times the square root of 300 becomes 100 times 3 and now instead of having to do this multiple times what we have is we have a very short end to this problem. So here we're going to break down every perfect square. So we have 6 multiplied by 4 times radical 3 minus 6 times radical 2 minus 3 times the square root of 100 is 10 radical 3's. And we're going to evaluate these wherever we can. So here we have 24 radical 3's minus 6 radical 2's minus 30 radical 3's. And now we're looking for like terms, right? And so what we have is 24 radical 3's and negative 30 radical 3's. So these two terms are going to combine and we're subtracting the magnitudes since they're the same type of object and this is not the same type of object. So we're not going to do anything with the negative 6 radical 2's. In fact, we're just going to leave it here because it has nothing in common with anything. And we're going to take the difference of these two and put it in the front here. So 24 radical 3's take away 30 radical 3's 24 minus 30 is negative 6. So we have negative 6 radical 3's. And since these two no longer have anything in common as far as the object goes, this is no longer needed to be worked out. Now remember, when you're breaking down these square roots, the best way and the reason for factoring this thoroughly completely is because you're looking for the largest perfect square to break down your square roots. Any other method is going to make you work a little bit harder. Like in the case of taking 48, in the square root and breaking it down to 4 and radical 12. What we have here is then just two radical 12's which the square root of 12 is can be broken down again into 4 and 3 which means this is perfect so we have 2 radical 4 radical 3 which becomes 2 times 2 radical 3 which is again just 4 radical 3's so it's easier to break down our 48 using the largest perfect square which gives us 
square root of 16 and square root of 3, which is just automatically 4 radical 3, instead of doing it doubly and making the work twice as hard by having to break it down more than once. It's easier to just use the largest perfect square to do this so that you can get there in one step. All right? Thank you.